This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 4, this is Section 3, The Self-Construct, Part 2. Friend, you are saying that if I think I have any personal rights related to this body and how it is used in relationship to other bodies, that is nothing more than a construct? David Exactly. It is made up. Fictitious. One can have the illusion of being violated. It could be anything from traumatic physical or sexual abuse to someone frowning at you or failing to give you praise. These appear to be different degrees of rejection or victimization, but it is all within the construct. The mind has to believe it is that construct before that can happen. There is an ordering of thoughts. There is a belief that there is something outside of me that can take away my peace. That has to be questioned. The construct has to be questioned. It has to be stepped back from and seen as a construct. Friend, the very idea that I have rights about my body feels to me like it rests on my desire to be in control. And the desire to be in control rests on the fear that I am not in control. David, you think you are given a little band of time between birth and death to be as you would like to be. It is like getting a blank canvas and a paint set. You may be painting and having a good time and then someone seems to come and disrupt your painting in some way. It seems to be a violation This is a metaphor, of course. For what so-called life in this world seems to be for a mind that believes that it is a construct or a concept. It says, Hey, I have my uniqueness, my individuality. I will share some things with you And we may be able to agree on some things. But I will always be a separate person. In a sense, that is where the control comes in. Because it is perceived as if there are forces, external situations and people that are taking away or eroding the me that I believe in. And until it is all seen as made up mental construct, there can be no peace. Friend, the horror of being out of control is really the horror of no longer having this construct or self-concept to cling to. David, Yes. What is the alternative? If I let go of this construct, then what? The ego counsels that you would be obliterated, annihilated. You won't be you. There will be nothing left. You will be destroyed. The spirit in the mind is reminding you 
that you will be you. You are you. But as you hold yourself as a concept, you do not know the magnitude of your own identity and your own reality. The spirit is advising, reminding and counseling the mind to let go. Friend, so while the ego is saying, it is going to be the worst thing that ever could happen, the Holy Spirit is saying, ah, if you only knew how wonderful the experience will be. David, and what are the implications of this? There is no racism in the world. Oh, what a statement. There is no sexism in the world. Huh? There is no ageism. There is no bigotry. Friend, where have you been? (laughs) David, yes. What place are you talking about? All of those perceived inequalities and problems are projected so that the mind will not have to look at the subject-object split in the mind. These two irreconcilable thought systems in the mind is where the problem is. I can crusade against racism and go out and try to convince others other bodies, to shape up and think better, to pass better laws. It is the same with all the different controversies and social issues. It seems ludicrous in the world to say that there are no problems. Are we talking pie in the sky when we bring it back to all being a construct? All of it is a construct. All the complexities and layers and levels of problems. From the interpsychic levels to global or international problems. Every single layer was made to obscure the simplicity that the split is in the mind and not in the world. That the problem is in the mind and not in the world. And that the problem is has been solved. There is no problem. Once the mind can step back and see the world as nothing more than an ideas, as nothing more than its own construct, then it sees that it is the dreamer of the dream. It is not in the dream. It is not a figure in the dream battling against other figures and forces of a wild and crazy dream. Once that is realized, the dream can be let go. It is a very happy dream, for the dreamer, when he sees, he is the dreamer of it, that he is the cause of it. Friend, because then he sees There is nothing that goes on within the dream that matters. David Yes, he sees he is the dreamer or the cause of the dream. That could be more accurately stated as the dreamer can see that he was the dreamer. Friend That it is over and done. It is past. David, it is over and done. It only seemed to have an existence in the past. It has no existence now. That is where we really get into the time aspect of the unholy instant and the holy instant. Friend, because the only thing that can have existence now is what is real. When you recognize that the dream is not real, 
then it cannot be something that is held in the present moment. It has to be something that was of the past. David All those lines in the course about the past being gone start to click. The construct is past. When the construct is seen as a construct, there is the awareness that the construct is also the past. End of section.